So, we have some bad news. You want to tell them? Ah. Delays. It happens. <laughs> it happens. So, Cody called us uh, about a week ago and said that the suspension wouldn't be ready by Raptors on the Rocks. So, what that means is I'm no longer going to be taking my truck up to him and dropping it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the truck out there in a couple days, drive it out there, have him install the uh, recovery rack so that way I can take the tires, the tires and wheels and have those ready for the, the uh, run, but I'll be out there on stock suspension. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but in the meantime, I do plan on still installing some more carbon stuff and having fun as it sits now. So delays happen, but we're gonna work through them and I wanted to thank Cody at TSW for being transparent because you know people can make excuses and whatnot. So it was good to get ahead of that and good to know that we won't be going there on 37s. So I got to get my 35s on and I got to get some tires installed, the recovery rack and all the stuff. So, mm -hmm. oh well. But with the 35s, we're going to have a nice little surprise for that. We so are. So you guys got to stay tuned. That'll be cool. That's cool. Somebody has once again hooked us up and... Something you guys have not seen before. Well, you have seen it before, but you would have had to be paying close attention to our vlogs. So we will have that in this episode as well. So until then, enjoy this next episode. All right, guys, we are going to remove the front seat and I'm going to fix the padding as well as the heating element. So let's get that started. Basically, just have to pop these covers off, which gives you access to the bolts. And it's a 13 mil back here too. I'm going to pull a seat out from the front. First, I'm going to slide it back to get the harness out. Right, wasn't too bad. So now I'm gonna take the opportunity to clean under here, which is actually pretty clean. When I got this, I got up underneath here as best as I could. So with the seat out now, we're gonna start taking the pad apart on bottom and the heating element underneath that too. So I decided to use our new packing station, which is basically a standing desk where we do all the packing and all that stuff. Um, it's easy for me to manipulate the chair up and down, so I'm going to use this, and I'm going to start the un or the the removal of the padding, uh, the backing, the leather, and all that stuff. Get all that stuff taken off, and then that should expose that should expose the padding that I can replace, as well as the heating element. So I'll get started here. So, I found the brake. Oops. All right. This is why it's not heating up. So, if I were to solder that back together or something, this whole heating element would probably work, but I'm not gonna do that. I have another heating element right here. And the other seat cushion is up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw all this stuff back on. It's brand new. You can see the bolsters here on this one are quite a bit different from this one that's been worn down. Look at all the wear. So yeah, I'm gonna take care of that and get back with you guys. All right, all finished up. We got the seat back in. And heating element's working. Looks new too. Looks good, feels good. So now we're gonna go cruise. right here really close to where we are where we live um we're gonna go play in the sand a little bit i have these tires aired down today so they should do should do even better but um 
I want you guys to hear the way this exhaust sounds. It's the again the SPD trombone exhaust, and this is actually the stock the stock muffler setup. So you guys will get a good idea on how this sounds. There's a lot of um, a lot of these tabs here that these don't these clips don't fit on. So, like for example, this one, you can see it's it's pretty thin, and so that lip in here is too thick. So this won't even push in. So what I've been doing is I've been taking my Dremel, and Marley's been holding a vacuum here. We've been we've been kind of show you. taking a little bit of material off and hopefully yeah so I need to take a little bit more off but hopefully this will sit in there when we're done we've done that on quite a few of these actually and uh, the fitment's not so great I'll put the uh, brand on the bottom here but yeah, whatever this is doesn't fit very well so we've had to do a lot of a lot of like dremeling on this specifically but we're almost done so we will get back to you when we're outside all finished up here you have it? All righty. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here first is make sure this will sit down in here. And it should, it should line right up. So, all right. Cross your fingers. Awesome, there. So now what we'll do is we will put these clips back on and tighten down the nuts. I like to hand thread these in first to make sure it doesn't pull too much. This is carbon, so you don't want to over tighten these. All right, so we're snugged back up. Everything looks good. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty clean. 
It's all pushed in, all secured. We're good. All right guys, so today what we're gonna do is we are going to work on the brake booster system. So this truck set a P0555 and a P0556. And what those are, are brake booster codes. I've seen the 555 pop up after you flash a tune uh, and it just goes away on its own. But then 556 came. And so that to me tells me there's something wrong with the brake system. And so looking at that, um, I found online that 556 is usually indicative of a vacuum leak somewhere. And so one of the, the telltale signs is when you press the brake, uh, it's really, really hard. And so what I did was I purchased this setup from Tasca. Now this is the whole vacuum system. There's the vacuum lines here, all the breather lines, it goes to the brake booster setup. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take off the old one where there's likely a vacuum leak, and then I'm going to install this. And this is all quick fittings. So I have a screwdriver, and I'm gonna move the intake out of the way. So we'll go ahead and get started doing that so you guys can check this stuff out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the intake out of the way. That way I can just get right to this whole system. Where That wouldn't be good. <laughs> Almost ruined my day there. Ready. So it should just slide right off. Remember, it's carbon, so be careful. So I'm just going to set that here. But you guys can see this brake, this whole brake boost system here. That's exactly what this is. This is going to replace this here. Actually goes this way. So let's remove this. It's kind of comical how easy some of this stuff is because it's literally all just quick fittings. So this stuff should just come right off. two and a half minutes. I accidentally just broke this part. But since we're replacing it, it's okay. I'm not gonna use it anyways. Stupid. Stupid, Put the sensor back in. Vacuum in there. Slow those onto the throttle body. Clips in. This one to the intake. And that's it. So I will get the intake put back on. Yeah, everything's secure. Just check these other things while I'm here. Alrighty. Now we'll go inside the truck, reset the check engine lights, and take it for a drive. So these are the codes you'll see. 555, which can be typical when you're tuning, so I'm not really so much worried about that one. But 556, that pressure sensor circuit range performance, that's odd. So that usually doesn't come on. So yeah, in my research, like I said earlier, I found that online. So I'm going to reset this and give it some time here. But yeah, the brake pedal is just really, 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 like, really hard. And that is apparently one of the signs. All right, we're going to go for a cruise. Hey, what's up, guys? So today we are heading to Cody up in Prescott Valley at TSW Off-Road. 
he's going to be putting in my recovery rack so that I can make it out to Moab and have spares that are required. So we just got the Phoenix and we're passing through basically, but the weather's nice here, which is cool. Uh, it's been pretty hot and, and windy in Las Cruces, so this is a good change, but we'll be back at his shop here in a few minutes and I will get back with you guys. Dude, I think that will fit here too. That, yeah. uh, yeah, that's lower than I thought. That's perfect. My name is Cody from PSW Arizona, and we had Goose Tune come out today. So, what we did is we reinforced his rear end, and the way we did it was with the set of RPG bump stop kits. It has a keen 2.5 bump stop, and what this does is it absorbs all that energy for bottoming out and transferring it to your frame. So, you know, there's times you accidentally hit a jump or go through a, a G out and bottom out. These shocks have different levels of internal bypass, which help with compressing at different, uh, different strokes. So once this fully compresses and there's nothing left, this is what's going to be here to save you and stop you going for a chiropractor. Um, the really cool part about the RPG bump kit as well is there's a cross race that goes from one side to another and it stops your frame from twisting and actually reinforces it. So on top of that, we did what's called a strike plate down here. So underneath there's a strike plate and it's meant to optimize as much travel as you can without losing it. And it's meant for the travel of this right here. So we relocated the brackets, allowed everything to flow nice and smooth inside. We set the pressure to 90 PSI, which is what I recommend, what I found to work really well on these trucks. And then uh, next time he comes by, it's gonna have some big shocks in here. <laughs> So before we head back to Las Cruces, we're going to fill up with some ethanol. And what's pretty cool is we can make it on a full tank, so I don't have to pull over. It's about 400 miles, so whatever the math is there. So I filled up with 33 gallons, so it's not too bad. But man, the weather here in Phoenix is so nice. Such a cool place. Wouldn't mind living here. And anyone in Phoenix on the corner of Baseline and Alma School, there's this Arco station and they have E85, so if you guys are looking for it, here it is. All right, our next stop is going to be SDHQ, and then we head home. So I'm really looking forward to going there. I've worked with those guys, uh, tuning a few trucks, but I want to see the facility. 
I heard it's a pretty pretty sweet warehouse. So we're gonna get some new straps for the recovery rack that Cody put in and head home. So we'll see you guys at SDHQ. picked up a lot of stuff this place is awesome if you guys haven't uh, been to SDHQ here in Gilbert Arizona you guys got to come uh, thanks to everybody who helped me thanks to Serena I uh, appreciate the hospitality but this place is super cool uh, they gave me a good walk around uh, I got to go to the back check out their fab facility it's a huge building um, yeah if you guys saw the montage earlier it's 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 awesome so just wanted to say thanks again um, I'll definitely be back there's a ton of stuff here so everything is in stock for what I needed so if you guys need anything same day, just stop on by. What is that? Is that the check? I don't know. Great. No kidding. It actually came. We knew they were going to come through. Heck yeah. You guys, you guys are going to be shocked. <laughs> 